Hello everyone, and welcome back to Science with Mr. Fitchery. We are going to look at our final lesson of Unit 1. We're going to look at convection and the mantle. Remember, the mantle is that middle part of the Earth. Below the crust, but uh, above the core. So, two objectives here. First, how is heat transferred? How does heat go from one place to another, essentially? <clears throat> and how does convection occur in Earth's mantle? So, you'll be happy to know we've only got one vocab word today. It's density. Density is the ratio of the mass of a substance to its volume. And the formula is mass divided by volume. <clears throat> so number one, objective number one, how is heat transferred? So what we need to understand first is that when an object is heated, the particles within it begin to move faster. And as they move faster, they have more energy. At the same time, when those particles are heated, they also move further apart. Okay, so as something gets hotter, the particles within it begin to move faster and further apart. Secondly, we need to understand that heat always moves from a warmer object to a cooler object. When that energy moves from a warmer object to a cooler object, it is called heat transfer. Now there are three types of heat transfer. We're going to look at each of them. First of all, uh, radiation, second, convection, and third, conduction. All right? As you see in the picture. Now, again, just to reiterate, because this is really, really critical. And it's going to be critical for this term and next term. Right? Cooler particles, right? cooler objects. The particles are still moving, okay? But if it's a cold object, those particles will be moving slowly and they will be close together. As that object warms up as it becomes hotter those particles will move faster and further apart okay you see here the cold object those particles are close and they're not moving very fast the hot object they're moving further apart and they're moving faster very much like this where you've got thermal energy, or I'm sorry, more thermal energy, objects that are hotter. You can see those particles, they're bouncing around everywhere, moving quickly, a lot of space between them. Then you see the, uh, the object with less thermal heat, less thermal energy. Those particles are still moving, but they're moving quite slowly, okay? And generally, they're not too far apart from each other. Okay, so please keep that in mind as we go further. First one, radiation. Radiation is energy transferred through rays. So, what's an example? Heat, all right? So just a couple examples here. Think about the sun. The sun transfers heat through rays, okay? 
The heat is moving from the sun through rays towards Earth. All right? We can feel the heat from the sun without touching it. Likewise, we can feel the heat from a campfire without touching it. Or, my favorite, is Jim Jum, right? I'm sure that many of you like to eat Jim Jum. Now, when you're eating it, you're not going to touch the pot, right? No, you would burn yourself. It's too hot. All right? But, can you feel the heat without touching it? Of course. That's because of radiation. The heat or the energy is traveling through rays. All right? So we don't have to touch the Jim Jum to know it's hot. We can feel it. Next is conduction. This is heat transferred between materials that are touching. Okay? So these two objects have to be touching for the uh, heat to transfer. My example is like stepping on hot sand and hurting your feet. Right? I'm sure we've all gone to the beach and we're excited and we take off our shoes and we begin walking on the sand. Yay, I can't wait to get to the beach. And then you realize, oh my goodness, my feet are really hot because the sand is really hot. Oh, let's get to the shade. <laughs> so that's a form of conduction, all right? When you burn your feet at the beach on the sand, all right? Two materials that are touching. The last one, and this is the one that's going to be critical for understanding the Earth. This is convection. Convection is heat transferred by the movement of a fluid or air. When warm liquid I'm sorry, warm liquid or air rises while cooler liquid and air falls. When this happens, it creates a circular movement. Now I want you to think about the, um, the heat pictures and GIFs we looked at a moment ago. So I want you to think about like a pot of water and we're trying to boil that water, okay? So, we're boiling that water. The water at the bottom of the pot begins to warm up. And like we learned, those particles are going to start moving faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And as they do, they're gonna move further apart. When this happens, those particles are going to rise to the top. As they rise, the cool water at the top sinks or falls down to the bottom of the pot of water. Then, those cool water particles are going to repeat. They're going to start warming up moving faster and faster and further apart, and they begin to rise. Okay? And those hot particles at the top have now cooled down, and they sink, and you create this circular pattern where hot material rises and cool material sinks. And it just repeats and repeats and repeats. So, our three forms of heat transfer, radiation, right? Heat transferred through rays. Convection, all right? Uh, through the movement of 
uh, particles through the movement of a fluid and conduction when two uh, materials are touching. Now let's look at how convection occurs in Earth's mantle. So, heat from the core of the Earth acts as a stove. Remember, the core of the Earth is hot, 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 and it is molten, okay? Now, pretend it acts like a stove. It's going to cause convection currents in the mantle. So, what exactly is happening? Well, this causes hot rock in the mantle to rise. It's moving towards the surface or towards the crust of the earth. While cool rock in the mantle and the crust begin to sink back down into the mantle and towards the core. So, as this happens, the crust of the earth moves and is changed very, very slowly. We're talking millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of years. So if we look at these pictures here, you see the convection currents in the mantle, all right? Hot material rising up from the bottom of the mantle, near the core, towards the crust and pushing the crust outward and back down into the mantle. What's going to happen? Well, it's going to uh, slowly move continents, all right? Continents like Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Europe, Australia, Antarctica. Those convection currents are strong enough to move them. Again, over tens of millions, hundreds of millions of years. So, this is just a little uh, kind of example here. Again, just to reiterate how this works. Because it is quite a complex uh, concept to wrap your head around. So, as you heat up soup, the soup at the bottom gets hot and rises, sending the cool soup to the bottom. The hot soup that has risen to the top then cools and sinks. Now this heating and rising, cooling and sinking starts a constant flow and this constant flow is called a convection current. So you see what's happening in this GIF. The hot material's rising, it's cooling down, and it is sinking back into the mantle. And the process repeats. You also see in the crust that little white arrow begins to move outward. It's pushing that crust, moving the land of the earth. And this is going to be the basis of everything we see. Mountains and oceans and other geographic formations. So again, please go back, try your best to understand how these convection currents uh, occur in Earth's mantle. They're going to be really, really, really important for understanding the rest of the term and how Earth changes. Okay? So, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, thank you so much. I hope you have a great day.